Some of my favorite feats to come out of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything gave martial characters some bonuses for using a weapon with specific physical damage types. In this video, I will be taking a look at the Crusher, Piercer, and Slasher feats, going over what they can do for your character, and discuss some ideas on how you can incorporate these feats into your roleplay. Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player-focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. First up is the Crusher feat, which will help anyone that deals bludgeoning damage to an enemy. When taking Crusher, we get to increase our strength or constitution by 1. The big benefit for this feat allows us to move a creature to an empty space 5 foot adjacent to it when we hit it with one of our attacks that deals bludgeoning damage to it on that turn. Also when we crit and deal bludgeoning damage, we daze our enemies making it easier for other attacks against them to land by giving those attacks advantage until the start of our next turn. Crusher offers characters battlefield control. While spellcasters can benefit from using this feat if they have spell attacks that deal bludgeoning damage, it is a waste on them as they have other spells in their toolkit that can accomplish so much more. Instead, this is a boon for frontline characters like hammer wielding barbarians, fighters, or paladins. Crusher is also great for monks as the feature works with unarmed strikes when using them for your attacks or flurry of blows. This is a team oriented feat when used effectively, it can save an ally by pushing the enemy away from them or finish off the enemy by pushing them into harm. The critical hit trait is a flavor win for me. Your attack hits so hard that it rings the bell of your enemy and they get so disoriented they struggle to hit anything else. When thinking about how you can roleplay the Crusher feat, hone in on the physicality of it. The bonus to strength or constitution speaks to physical training. You can have your character do a workout routine every time they have a bit of downtime, or if your character is pressed for time, a good old Rocky montage works too. Push-ups, pull-ups, or going for a jog, have your character perform exercises that focus on strength or endurance. For something a bit more class specific, a monk could be shown breaking bricks or hardening their fists by punching hard surfaces. For any bludgeoning weapon user, they can also use their downtime to spar with other members of the party and emphasize putting force behind their swings. Alternatively, you could have your training focus on learning about how to capitalize on enemy momentum, timing attacks, and targeting weak points. The next feat is for all those players with characters that love to give a stabbing or fill an enemy full of arrows. Piercer provides benefits for any character that deals piercing damage. Similar to Crusher, Piercer will let us increase our strength or dexterity by 1. The bread and butter feature allows us to reroll the damage die on a single attack on our turn. And for the critical effect, we can add an extra damage die for an attack if that attack was a critical hit. Piercer doesn't offer any sort of control features for an attacker, but instead looks to raise the average damage output for a character using an ability that deals piercing damage. It's a slight variation of the fighting style option for martial classes, great weapon fighting. The critical trait is nearly identical to the half-orc savage attacks trait with minor differences in how they can be applied. Savage attack only works with melee weapon attacks, while piercer can be applied to any attack whether it's melee or ranged, but it just has to deal piercing damage. If we are trying to get the most out of our critical damage, playing a half-orc using a melee weapon that deals piercing damage paired with the piercer feat can achieve that goal. Piercer pairs nicely with ranged weapons, giving archers and crossbow wielders another solid option to add to those builds. It's not an integral feat compared to other options like sharpshooter, but it's still a solid set of abilities if it fits into a character build. Incorporating the piercer feat into your roleplay is similar to my ideas for Crusher. Your character could spend some time studying the anatomy of humanoids and monstrous creatures to exploit their weak points. Strength characters using spears or other melee weapons with the piercing damage type can emphasize using force behind their attacks, attempting to stab through their enemies. Dexterity based characters can easily be shown practicing their accuracy and speed. If your character is using a bow, they can spend their downtime practicing their aim. In the case of a rapier wielder, having them fence against other party members or even a teacher can lead up to your character mastering their skills to pick up this feat. Pair the strength or dexterity suggestions with the idea of the character studying weak points on the body. They are mastering this skill pairing their wit with physical force or accuracy. Slasher is the last of the physical damage enhancing feats looking to give those sword and axe users some ability over the enemy's movement. Slasher follows the same trait structure from Crusher and Piercer. For starters, we have the choice to increase our strength or dexterity by 1. The second trait will allow us to reduce the speed of a single creature by 10 feet on our turn if we hit them with an attack that deals slashing damage. And when we crit on an enemy, they have disadvantage on all attack rolls until our next turn. Slasher gives players the ability to slow an enemy down. The feat's goal is similar to Sentinel, but in comparison is weaker. Sentinel outright stops an enemy in their tracks regardless of what melee weapon we use. This doesn't mean Slasher is terrible, but it's just Sentinel's too good at what it does that it dwarfs any similar option. For tables that ban the sentinel feat, slasher is a solid option to consider. Slasher's mechanics does a great job of relaying the intended flavor. Every time we attack our enemy we slice through their body slowing them down as they attempt to coddle their wounds or we hit a spot that hinders their movement. Slasher is the perfect feat for a player that wants to play a character with the lumberjack lifestyle. Your strength character can be active during exploration, be 
being the one to locate wood and chop it down to start a fire. Dex-based characters could emphasize working on the speed of their attacks. The slasher feat could embody the saying, death by a thousand cuts. Your character trains during their downtime, building up their speed, attempting to get in as many attacks as possible on a target. These feats still work with spell attacks that do these damage types, so spellcasters aren't left out, but with the variety of spell options they have, they have no need to take these feats. In my opinion, these are welcome additions for martial classes with builds that focus on a specific weapon, but aren't necessarily required for that build. They are just nice additions you can add in if they fit. Crusher is my favorite and possibly the best out of the bunch. It is the feat that manages to match the flavor and mechanics seamlessly compared to the others. Forcing the enemy to move to a different position on the battlefield with an attack gives martial characters some control elements they usually don't have and is usually reserved for spellcasters. Piercer is solid for many ranged builds and as I've said, it's pretty easy to slot into builds but not necessary. I don't feel the flavor and mechanics fit together. Getting to have a higher average damage per round is great but it doesn't translate to stab wounds or an arrow impaling your enemies. It doesn't mean the mechanics are bad though, I would have just liked to see an effect that better reflects sustained wounds. Slasher is a solid choice but is overshadowed by the Sentinel feat which makes it look terrible in comparison. In reality, Slasher is balanced and could be an alternative option to look at if you want to be able to hinder enemy movement without hurting your DMs and counter building. With the introduction of these feats, I hope they pursue others that enhance the energy damage types. This is a fun design space that can go a long way with helping players feel like a weapon master or an elementalist spellcaster. With that said, I want to hear from you. How do you use a Crusher, Piercer, or Slasher feats? Let me know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you need some suggestions on some feats to pick up for your spellcaster and are looking for ways to incorporate it into your roleplay, watch my video, Feats for Spellcasters. You can check out the video by clicking the thumbnail on the screen or in the link in the description below. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.